Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be using a loop. More specifically we're going to be going through how a for loop works and then I want to build a very very fun game for us. And in that game what we're going to do is we're going to have a wedding list where we're going to have 15 or 20 names or something. We'll pick something. We're also going to have a list of people that just can't stand one another and we know not to put them at the same table. So we're going to build a little algorithm that's going to use for loops. It's going to use functions, which we've learned in the past already. And with all of that, we're going to try to optimize our table so that we have everybody happy at our wedding. But before we get into that kind of stuff, let's go over the basics of loops. So what are loops? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to start off by creating a random list. And I want to just create a random list of numbers. And so while I don't have any numbers ready off the top of my head, I'm just going to generate a random list of numbers, really. So we'll say list is equal to random dot rand int. And I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. 100. And this is what happens when you just sort of wing it and you do it live. You know, I, don't, I didn't really prepare or I don't generally prepare. I like to go with the flow and see what we learn along the way. But here's what I've done. Hopefully this runs. Before I explain it, let me just make sure it run, runs. Okay, cool. So here's what we've done. We've basically said that I want to have 20 different items. So this goes from 0 to 20. So there should be 20 different items in, the, is in this list. So what it's saying is generate a random number between 1 and 100, which is going to be represented as x in the range of 1 to 20. So basically generate a random number between 1 and 100 20 times. And that's what this is. So I'm just going to take this list because if I keep running this function, the list is going to change. And I don't want to do that. So we're just going to say list is equal to this. And I'll comment this out just so we have a list to work with now. So we have some random numbers. Great. All right, so now that I have this list, what, what am I going to do with this list in terms of using a for loop? What exactly is a for loop good for? Well, a for loop is really good for iteration. So what it will actually do is you can go through this entire list and have some kind of an operation or do some kind, something with it, and it will evaluate every single element of this list. So first it will evaluate 90, it will evaluate 80, it will evaluate 27, and so forth. It will do it one by one. So what I'll do is I'll create a list quickly with well, I've already created the list here with numbers. We're going to do something similar with names, and I'll just have two to three names in there afterwards to show you what it's doing. But let's just say, now that we've printed this entire list out, great. But what if I actually wanted to only print out the items in here that were, say, less than 50? How would I go about doing that? Well, this is where a for loop becomes very helpful. So we can do something like for i in LST if i is less than 50 print i. So let me show you what this is doing. So what it's going to do is it's going to print every single element here that's less than 50, which is cool. But here's what it's doing. What the for loop does is it'll set i as 0 first. So it's going to take the first element of the list. It'll say 90. Is it less than 50? In this case, it's not, so I'm not going to print. Then it'll go and iterate to the next one. 30. Is 30 less than 50? Yes. So it'll print. And so that's essentially what you see this doing. I can even just share this or save this to a new list if I want it. So I can say something like new list, and we'll just set this as a blank list for now. And then I can say if this is true, then I can say something like new list dot append i. And all that it basically means is it's saying that every single time one of these elements here meet this criteria, just add it to the list. So we'll say print new list. When you print that, there you go. You've got a new list of items that are all less than 50. And I can do the same thing if I say greater than 50, it'll print out the opposite. And I can sort this, I can do whatever. So like we learned in the list tutorial earlier, you can go back and reference that in one of the earlier videos that'll show you how to sort this stuff as well. So that's using lists with numbers at a very high level. You can do a lot of things with it. There's a lot of operations, but essentially the for loop is a very, very straightforward loop to use. It just loops literally through every single one of these. Now, what if my list was actually a bunch of names. So what if I said names is equal to John, Mike, and Alex. Let's just say for that. Now what it's actually going to do 
is it will iterate through each one of these different items. But let's see how it works. So if I say, if I say for i in names print i. So it'll actually go ahead. So I'm going to go and comment this out because we're not going to use this again for now. It'll go ahead and it'll print all of the different names that are out there. Okay, which is great. Now, I didn't do a really good job of picking these names because they're all the same number of characters, four characters. But again, this is where a list, or sorry, this is where a for loop can become helpful. So let's say I say Marcus and I say Angela. So now I've got a list of all these names. What if I only wanted to print out the ones that were greater than four characters? How would I do that? So you go with something similar, for i in names, and that's basically saying iterate through all of these different ones. If len i is greater than four, print i. So what does that give us? That gives us only Marcus and Angela because Marcus and Angela are the only ones that are less than, or sorry, that are greater than four characters. Let's say I added in Tom and Bob. And now I say something like less than five characters. It should give me everything other than Marcus and Angela. So if I print this out, John, Mike, Alex, Tom, and Bob. And if I change this to four, it should only give me Tom and Bob. So again, there's cool things you can do with, uh, with for loops. So I'm going to comment all of this out because I want to go ahead and create our wedding party application. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we need a few things. First of all, I'm going to need a wedding party. So give me a second. You don't need to watch me type out a whole bunch of names. I'm just going to pop in a bunch of names and I'll be right back. All right. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and picked 15 different random names. I just Googled 15 names literally, and I stored that in a list called wedding party. So all of these, Items here, again, are stored in this variable, wedding party. All right, so now that I have a list of all of these folks that are at the wedding, I also need to know who I can't see together. So I'm going to go ahead and first make the assumption and say, because there's 15 people, five people at a table, we'll have three different tables. So let's just build a list for every table. So we'll call it, you know, we'll call it the no-no table. So these are the folks that just can't sit with one another. All right, so now we've got a list of people that just can't sit with one another. So what do we do at this point? All right, so I guess we need to build some kind of a for loop. So let's see what that's going to look like. So why don't we say something like for x in wedding party, if x not in, and this is going to be for the first table. So we'll say no, no, one. And here's what I'm going to do. This is only going to work because I have two names in this list. So what it's going to do is it's going to say if, as I'm iterating through this list, if this person's name is not the second person in the list, then add it in. And the reason is, if I have John and Mike already in the list, that's okay. I just can't have Bill in this list as well. So if I had three or more people, I'd have to write the algorithm slightly differently. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to keep it simple and write it like this. So all it's going to say is, as long as... As I'm iterating this, as long as that this person, whoever I'm iterating on, is not going to be equal to Bill because I'm pulling from Nono one go ahead and add him to the list. So let's see what this looks like. So we're going to say this, and then we're going to say, we'll say table underscore new dot append, and then we'll say x. All right, so now we're just going to run print table underscore new. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, I need to define table underscore new somewhere. So table underscore new is equal to an empty list. All right, so now I've got a whole bunch of people here. But I'm actually going to show you an easier way to write this entire statement. This is what I would call the, you know, the old school way of writing a for loop. But if I were to go ahead and rewrite this, we're going to use something called list comprehension. And it's just something that's a lot more easier to read and easier to use. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite this because I want to use this comprehension moving forward and then we will go and see how we're going to do the rest of it because the code is a lot shorter too. So this is the same thing as saying table new is equal to x for x in wedding party if x not in no no one negative one. So this one liner is the exact same as this. So if I go ahead and say print table new again, 
I should get the exact same table, which I do. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this way of doing it because I don't have to define. It's all defined here. It's just a lot more easier, I find. And this is basically the same thing as taking all of this stuff and just putting it inside these brackets right here. That's essentially what we're doing. So very straightforward. So we'll go ahead and use this method and we're good. I can't have more than five people at a table because I've decided I'm going to have three tables of five. So I need to limit that somehow. So the next line of code that I'm going to write is I'm going to say table is equal to table underscore new and we're going to limit this from up to five. We'll just call it that and then we'll print table. And so now I've got five people and the beauty of this is that even though Mike and Bill are, are together in the top list, in the wedding party list, Bill is nowhere to be found. So this table is considered complete. And it didn't take me a lot of code to write that. But now when I do the second table, I'm actually going to be doing the exact same thing again. So I'm going to be using this exact same code, just tape, just changing nono to nono2 over here, and this to table2 or something around those lines. So remember in one of our previous tutorials when I talked about looking at rerunning the code again, we probably don't want to do that. It's better to just put this in a function. It's just so much easier. But I forgot one important step here. And the important step that I forgot is now that I've actually gone ahead and I have these five names from this list, I have to make sure that whatever new list I use to generate the other two tables don't already include these five names. So I need to take the difference between the wedding party table and this table to come up with a new table that only has now 10 people in it. So if I was using numbers, this would be a lot, lot easier. I can just take wed wedding party minus table and I'm good to go. Or I can use a set function. I can do a whole bunch of different ways to do this. But because I got names, this is going to be a little bit harder to do. So we're going to define a function to do this. So I've used this function several times in the past. So defining it and writing it is just kind of second nature for me, but I'll explain what I'm doing in one second. I probably could pull this from another file, but I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm saying i for i in l1 plus li2 if i not in li1 or i not in li2 return li diff. So what's happening here? So I'm passing in two different lists. I'm going to be passing in wedding party, which is the original list of 15. And then I'm going to be passing in this list of five. And what it's going to say is it's going to iterate through all of these. It's going to look at four. Basically, it's going to say for I and both of these together, if I is not in one or I is not in the other, then just add it to say that it's say that it's different because it's uh, it's something that's unique. It's not in the combination of both. So let's see when I run this, what does it give me? So I'm going to reallocate wedding party to equal to diff wedding party and table. I should probably come up with a different name for that. But anyways, we'll go with this and then I'll run wedding party. And so all I'm trying to show you here, guys, is to show that, look, I have a list of five people. And now when I generate my other two tables, I'm picking from 10 names and not 15. And it's not the same names that are here. The other thing is this, like I said, this first table already meets this rule where Mike and Bill are not sitting at the same table. So we're good for now. But again, if I were to rerun this for table two, I'd be running this the exact same way. So it just makes perfect sense to put this in a function. So let's do that. So when I do this, I'm going to just define a new function and we'll call it, what do we want to call it? We'll call it tables or something like that. So I'll be passing in a wedding list and I'll be passing in a no-no, whether it's no-no one, two, or three. So I'll call it no-no X and we'll define that afterwards. So when I do this, I'm going to change this to no-no X. So table new is what it's saying is that every single time I run this function, take the existing wedding party list I have. So the first time it's going to take 15, it's going to run through no, no one, because that's what I'm going to pass in the function. And it's going to come up with, and what I don't need it to do, I don't need it to print these. I need it to return these and I'll show you why this is important. So return. And so it's actually going to return to me two lists. One is the list with the list of five. And the second is the remaining party of, of the people. So when I, if I were to go ahead and print this, so let's just say I say table one and I say wedding party is equal to, I'll say tables, wedding party, and no, no one. So let's see what this actually prints out. Print table one, 
and then we're also going to print the wedding table or sorry the wedding um, party now at the end after I run this three times the wedding party list should in theory be blank or zero but we'll see what happens so when I run this I'm getting table one is John Mike Alice Michelle and Ron and then the rest of the wedding party is this great so the beauty of putting this in a function now is if I were to go ahead and run this again I just do table two and no no two and that's it and so now I'm gonna go ahead and print table here I'm just gonna copy and paste this make life easier table two and table two and then why not just do all of them just to make sure that they all work so we'll go ahead and do table three and I don't need to print the wedding party anymore because that list should be blank I've already used up all 15 so let's see if this actually meets our conditions so I've got John Mike Alice Michelle and Ron so Mike cannot be in the same table as Bill, which is good. So Mike and Bill are separate. Ron and Alex. So Ron is in this table. Alex is in this table. Great. Ingrid and Erica. Erica and Ingrid. So we're good. So that's good. So we've gone ahead and created a function that's going to allow us to take a wedding party of 15 people, put in some conditions on who can't sit together, and actually generate a table. And if you think about it, if we go ahead and take all of this stuff out I'm just gonna delete this that was all done in less than 25 lines of code and I can probably even if I take out these spaces which I shouldn't according to pep 8 20 to 25 lines of code and you've got yourself an application that will take in a list of a wedding party of 15 it'll take in three other lists based on the number of tables you have on who can't sit together and go ahead and generate something for you that's gonna go and give you a table assignment so that it meets all your criteria and that's all using a for loop so hopefully you found this tutorial very helpful I'm trying my best to keep all of these examples to be as practical as possible so that we can actually start building real applications out of this and as we go down the path as we create as I create new content and other videos they're all going to be based on some kind of application in real life and not just syntax it's important for you to understand the syntax but I also want to make sure you take out of this some kind of learning so that you can apply it in real life so hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.